it's 4.35. Um, and we are running this meeting by remote attendance pursuant to state executive orders 2020-07 and 2020-18, which temporarily suspend an in-person presence requirements and limitation, limitations on remote access of the Open Meetings Act. Uh, we are acting in co accordance of those, um, of those um, orders. Uh, would anyone like to uh, move for the approval of the agenda? Are there any changes? No, it's as it is as published. And uh, I will move to accept the agenda. Okay, thank you. I second. Thank you. And all in favor, raise your hand. Greg, I guess you'll have to say uh, yes. Yeah. You have to do it. Everything has to be a vo voice vote per, oh. uh, yep. Everything has to be a voice vote. So okay. you, a roll, excuse me, a roll call vote. Everything okay. has to be a roll call vote. Greg. Yes. Samantha. Yes. Amy, yes. Okay, public comment. Um, we are not open to the public. We provided information on emailing um, comments. Rick, have we received any public comments? We have not. Okay. Were we gonna do the minutes as well? Oh, I'm sorry. Could I have a motion on the minutes? I'm so sorry. I'll move to accept the minutes as presented. Okay. A second? I second. Okay, thank you. Um, all in favor say aye. Greg? Aye. Samantha? Aye. Amy? Yes. And then I made the comment on public comment. Rick said there were none. Old business, we just have a couple of items um, for discussion just to keep them on the agenda. Um, Rick, do you want to offer any additional information on either of the old business items? Uh, as far as space planning, I just wanted to, the space planning committee did meet uh, since last we met, and uh, I'm still waiting for feedback. From from the from the whole committee and and uh, Samantha and I are going to have a chat about it uh, later this week to 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 talk about you know what possible next steps there might be. So we met. We've got some. We've got about uh, five plans from which to choose. Uh, you know, we had some good discussion. I'm, I'm just kind of hoping that each member of the committee can uh, uh, weigh in on you know which they like best. Is there any that uh, that need to be uh, that are great as is, or, you know, just, I, I want to hear fi final recommendations to uh, then eventually bring to uh, the board of trustees. And do those plans include sort of a, a, a minimal kind of effort on up, I assume? Yeah. 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 And I, I, I wouldn't call even the lowest one, I wouldn't call it minimal necessarily, but it's, uh, you know, and, and, but that's always a, you know, again, that's always an option. So, I mean, these are very uncertain times. So, uh, there's a there's a lot more uncertainty than there was six months ago. Well, and I would encourage you to take full um, fully assess that because we've got two dimensions of that uncertainty: how people's use patterns change and what the financial picture is going to be long term. And yeah, absolutely, those are that both. Yeah, and I've got an idea for the for the for the second part that we'll we'll see. I'll be bouncing off of uh, probably the foundation. But as far as the first one goes, I I talked to uh, uh, the, our the, our architects and I asked them about their other projects and uh, or what is being talked about in the industry in general. Uh, they remember they do just libraries, uh, and uh, they said right now all of their clients are working under the assumption that someday meeting rooms are still gonna be something that people need. And someday, uh, group, smaller group rooms are gonna be something somebody need and maker spaces. The only thing they're seeing different is uh, almost everybody now wants a drive up, drive up window, which uh, you know, for, us, for us, there's no good place for that. No. You know, so. But the arrangement you have is as close to drive up as you could possibly be. Sure. Yep. I mean, so. Yeah, the only thing it returns is the only, you know, yeah. the only thing that we you know, we don't do at this point, and we may consider that going down the road too, though. Yeah. 
Okay, thank you. Hey, so, hey, okay. just a, a comment on that. Um, you know, Rick, down down the road. Um, you know, maybe maybe our mistake when we designed the parking lot. You know, we didn't. You know, kind of put in a design to have a drive up window. We probably could have configured something somewhere. You know, um, close to the building. Um, but but what about what about on the north side of the building? Uh, what street is that? That is uh, Prairie. It's Prairie. Prairie. Um, wh what if what if what if we put a drive-in window there? You know, I mean, there, there's 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 grass, there's garden, you know, um, there's uh, uh, um, maybe maybe it's conceivable it's conceivable that we could do that, um, you know, and and uh, you know, I mean, that that is the you know that. Le I think the, I think the outside grass level is second floor of the building, um, but the second floor of the building has uh, uh, offices back there. You know, it's and, and somewhere maybe it's in between. It's somewhere in you between, know? which is the is the difficulty. I mean, there uh, might be there still might be a, a spot or two, and I will definitely run that by uh, Dan and Tiffany to see what they think. But it's yeah, it is interesting. You have to you know cut a drive through there, and it's uh, there are some possibilities. I mean, I think on the on the north uh, east on the northeastern part, it's lower, and it might be level with the first low. I think probably is. Uh, so, okay. Okay. Yeah. But I'm I mean, it's something, about. yeah, it's something to, at least at least to discuss and get some somebody to look at it, engineering wise or otherwise, just to see if it's even conceivable. Well, you know, I'm, and like if, to, I'm sorry. Then we could, then we could, if it, you know, if it is engineering conceivable, then then we could, okay, get some ballpark engineering estimate what the cost is, and then if we're compelled to do it, we can figure out how we do it and pay for it. Well, and I'd like to throw out another interim suggestion or, or less cost suggestion. I mean, because, you know, sitting in your car for five minutes while they come out with the books is pretty convenient, but the, the drop-offs are a problem. But what about like a postal box, like in your car, you know, in like yeah. right in front of the front door so you could just use the existing very nice walkway, driveway, and come up and stick your but books in? The, the yeah. problem with that is it's two-way traffic. So in order for the driver. Oh, right. Is, so, I mean, there, there's a there's a potential solution in that being a small island and maybe in the north-south driveway, and you could put the box that had both sides because some of the boxes have, the drop boxes have, have two-sided ones. Neither Robert or I are a big fan of drop boxes because of the damage they do to materials over time, but... Uh, they, you know, most, most library, that said, most libraries do use them and it's not always, yeah. it's not terrible. And it's a, that's, I, that is, we had one and we got rid of it because we couldn't come up with a solution to that problem. Uh, one, if there's one way traffic, it's, it's doable, but two way traffic, it's just, it's not without building an island. Yeah. in the, in the, in the, you know, the other problem I, I believe there is, um, related to, let's say a mailbox, drop box, whatever you want to call it, that's not connected to the building is now staff access to empty it is a pain. Sure. You know, sure. What about in January? You know, well, they, what I about mean, you have one, one, like until the yeah. parking lot was done, like there was one. Yeah. Out yeah, but, there, but it is, but it is extra, it is extra labor and it's not oh, labor yeah. for, and it's not labor for library staff. Right now, you know, because it was our it was our maintenance guys that did it, but now it's uh, the city's maintenance yeah. guys that do it. So yeah, yep. yeah. Well, anyway, just encourage you to be creative. Don't don't leave any option unlooked at. Right. Yeah, definitely. Is there any okay. update on? I don't know if we're at that point, but is there any update on the um, when the landscaping will be kind of taken care of? Or yeah. Let me let me tell you. Let me just give a little report on that because I've been um, I've been uh, uh, asking a bunch of questions about that too. It's 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 a real disappointment uh, by Christy Fultz, or uh, I'm disappointed in Christy Fultz. Um, the project is finished, parking lot's done, yeah. but they they did uh, they haven't done 
um, they haven't done the landscaping. I, I, you know, I don't know. It was a couple of weeks ago. I, I, I was driving by the library and the grass, the weeds were just coming out of the thing. And, and, uh, you know, with the COVID stuff, I haven't been over there very often and was gone on, on vacation for a while this summer. And, and I, it, it, kind of, it irritated me. So I came back, I called, uh, public works, um, and, uh, and said, Hey, the city will come over and cut the grass. Well, public works, um, called Christy Fultz. Christy Fultz, somebody out, send somebody out to cut the weeds. Uh, but, but, but I, I discussed with public works, they're going back at Christy Fultz because what Christy Fultz has to do um, is they have to churn up all that dirt to get rid of the weeds. And then they got to lay the sod or plant the grass that they never did this spring. Why they never completed it this spring, I'm not sure. I don't have an answer to that. Greg, Greg they, public they, I can interject. They did, they did plant this spring, they, but it was, it was actually early summer. They planted late enough that it did not take. Oh. Okay, all right. But, but they've got to do it again. They will, public Works tells me they will do it again. There's money um, in the project that we've not yet paid the final amounts to Christie Fultz because they've got to finish the landscaping. And if they don't do it, we won't give them the money and then we'll have money to have it get done. But I told public works is that's got to be done before, you know, we, we get to the, to the fall. Um, you know, that was part of the whole appeal of that parking lot and all the green space that, that the library would have green space opportunity or green space, right. um, you know, to use for, for a variety of purposes. And we got to get that done and we got to get it done this fall. It's got to be planted. So next spring grass will come up. It'll be good and, and it'll be useful for the library. Thank you so much, Greg. So, yeah. I, appreciate I'll, you. I'll, I appreciate you doing that, Greg. I really do. Uh, they, I'll get back to that. But I was told I'm by, uh, oh, uh, Robert, what's the name of the, uh, the, the uh, kind of the foreman guy over at the city that was we were working with? Oh, yeah. I know you're talking about. Um, anyway, he said that uh, he said they were going to, they're planning on replanting. This was, uh, Probably, probably not long after you talked to him, Greg, uh, that uh, they were planning on replanting in August, which to me, that's not a very good month to plant grass seed either. Probably ought to wait until September or October. But, uh, yeah, I mean, they, they, it, they, they planted, they fertilized, but they did it in, uh, I, I want to say it was early to mid-June, and it just, uh, it just didn't. Then there was... You know, after all the rain we had, then there was a dry spell, and it just didn't take. Yeah, but the weeds yeah. did fine. <laughs> I, I talked to Mike Lipka also, and Mike, um, if you look at the dirt, actually, it's there's more rocks in it than it should be. So it's not a yeah. good foundation. So probably what they're going to have to do is uh, put down more Fox. soil to start before they even start the planning process. So, so they've got to. That's true. They've got to put more dirt down. Yeah, and, and, and the, 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 the last thing I can say is public works will be on top of it. City public works will be on top of it. They will make sure it gets done uh, one way or another, either by Christie Fultz or we'll, we'll withhold money from them and we'll hire somebody else to do it. Um, but, but I'll follow up again with public works, um, you know, in, in the next short period of time so we can uh, – you know, we can, I can come back and advise everybody what, you know, what, what the schedule is. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, that's great. Okay, are we ready to go on to new business? Everybody okay? Yep. Um, so, as usual, we've got the check register. I know um, Rick sent it out a couple times, so it would format easier. I just have a couple questions. So, um, okay. should this, I share the screen? Yeah. Oh, sure. Samantha or Greg, do you have any uh, particular things you want to talk about? I do not. I just had, um, I think I had a question. Let's see. Obviously, you were very busy buying things. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of books. Lots of books. That's good. Um. Books are a good way to spend the money. Yes. Yeah, they had a lot of catching up to do. Yeah. <laughs> I cannot remember what it was. Amy, go ahead. 
Okay, uh, so, well, the, the big thing on page seven, and I know you're going to tell me, you've already explained this to me, but just humor me because I've forgotten. Uh, Lingso Systems is $10,000. Yeah, that's, uh, uh, that is the annual uh, service agreement for the uh, automated service or autom automated uh, uh, sorter. Oh, that's the system. sorter. That's yep. not the that's not the check in part. That's the that's sorter. not the that's, that, that, well. Yeah, this it's the check in, but not the check out. So uh, it's the it's the big automated system that, that you you return your books to. Well, you used to return your books to. We still use it on the back end. Uh, once the books have been have been quarantined for four days, then we check them in by running them through that check them in and sort them and turn the uh, security back on by running it through that. It's just not available to the patrons right now. Right. And so, so does this contract cover both the front and back end or is there another contract for the front end? Well, for the checkout, it's a, it's another, it's another one. And I have not come to an agreement with them. And in fact, the agreement has, uh, I've let it lapse and the only, our only, uh, we don't have access to the statistics now because of that. Uh, but you know, it's, you know, they want, um, what, $8,000 a year, uh, for about $60,000 worth of equipment. And, and that to me makes no sense at all. Mm -hmm. And I tried to say, okay, I just, I'll just pay for the license. I don't, you know, that's fine. And then if you have to come in, we'll pay for time and materials. And uh, they said, well, if you want the license, you have to, you have to get the whole service agreement. That's the problem with these proprietary systems. You're, you know, you're. And we have other, we have non-proprietary systems with which we can uh, replace them with as we need to. You know, and okay. I reminded, I reminded this lower level employee of that who will not kick it up to somebody else. So my next step is going to be, I think, probably call the sales agent because, you know, he's got a vested interest in me being a happy customer because right. he knows that he knows that I talk to other librarians and, and, and that sort of thing. So he might be able to, to light a fire. You know, I, I 3000 maybe, you know, uh, you know, and they offered me a, you know, 10% discount. Uh, so that's not, you know, we, we can do better than that. So it's stalled right now. But as far as, as far as this goes, so this is ten thousand dollars on a two hundred thousand dollar uh, system, ten thousand dollars annually. It gets us the the hotline, which we use ten or twelve times a year, and resolves problems. Uh, and it gets us it gets us a, a an annual uh, maintenance preventive maintenance uh, visit, uh, and it uh, gets us uh, like I, I think it's a forty eight hour guarantee is I believe it's 48 hours that, that they will be you know if we have a major issue they'll be here with somebody on site and we get a vastly discounted cost on that and most of the time it'll be free so you've okay. been uh, you've been really happy with with them right uh, uh, much more so yeah I mean uh, 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 when we call the hotline they're usually able to resolve the problem now we had an initial misstep they didn't send somebody out for the first year they didn't send somebody out for the uh, for the uh, preventive maintenance agreement. And uh, uh, after some back and forth, you know, they, they wanted $14,000. Uh, and after some back and forth, they gave us that first, the first two years for 11,000. So they wanted, they wanted 14,000 a year. Uh, and we got them down to 11,000 for, for two year, first two years. And this year they were gonna want like 16,000. As you can see, we got them to 10,008. You know, that's probably what it's worth. You know, it's, I'm, I'm not saying I got some kind of a deal here. They probably just, they highball you and, but, but uh, yeah, that's, we, and I went back and forth on this one too, but you know, after getting input from, from Robert and Matt who have dealt with the system more than anybody else, uh, I, I thought it was wise to do this. Right. And so, and on the front end, or I mean on the check out, uh, patrons are not using it, right? You're not having. They are. We have opened it up to patrons now. Oh, you have opened yeah, it up. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, do keep us informed about how the uh, the checkout contract is going. And I encourage you to. I encourage you to. Uh, you know, go higher. <laughs> talk with 
talk with somebody higher. Yeah, yeah. Gonna... I've, I've been trying to uh, from uh, and, and this the person that assigned to me, man, she won't she won't bump it up at all. Well, you know, you can cold call the higher ups. Yeah, if you can find if you can find how how to uh, let me know because uh, yeah, I can't even find the CEO's name anywhere. Oh wow. Okay. Oh, actually, I found the CEO's name, but not the contact information. Okay. Well, keep us posted. And then remind me, um, what do you buy from Amazon? Oh, all kinds of stuff from office supplies uh, to equipment to uh, occasionally there are some uh, materials uh, that, that we can't get through Baker and Taylor or some of our other suppliers, but yeah, all kinds of things. And that one specifically, though, is on the the one that's on the front, front that page is the project next generation events. Uh, on page what, seven, the twelve hundred dollar one. It's right in the middle. Right yeah, the middle. that is a that Robert can speak to that. That was a project next generation expense. Uh, what which which one was that, Robert? You're on mute. Yeah. Which one is it again? Uh, the the twelve hundred dollar PNG expense that we got from Amazon. Do you recall what that was? Oh yeah, that's uh, for the the PNG kids for um, them to do a podcast. Got it. Well, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah I love it. it. Does yeah. the record the recording equipment? Yeah. Wow. Right here. Oh, cool! I love it. So who's gonna who's gonna do that? Uh, project next next generation. Project next generation, and the the, the whole the, the whole uh, uh, reason for project next generation. It's kind of a it's one of the uh, Secretary White's favorite uh, projects. Uh, is uh, it's you, you put you, you put uh, technology in the hands of disadvantaged kids, and right. that's been kind of and here at, at, at Decatur Public, that's been Robert's baby for several years. Right. Can't wait to see what happens. That's super. Um, and then, um, the only the my only last question is just I know because we've had so much discussion on office equipment. How are things with lot these days? You're breaking up just a little bit. Uh, could you repeat that? How are things with watts these days? Good. Yeah, I'm happy with them. Great. Those are all the questions I had on the check register. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I had any. Are we ready for a motion on the checks to recommend to the board that they be accepted? I'll make a motion. There's Greg. <laughs> There's Greg. I I, uh, I, uh, I couldn't connect, Rick, because uh, apparently I, I lost uh, internet access somehow. And uh, okay, now I get your email, so I was able to connect. Good. All right, so I made the motion. Would you like? A to second. <laughs> okay. All in favor, Greg? Wait, don't, don't you have to do a by person? Yes, Greg. Do oh, you... oh, yes. <laughs> okay, Samantha? Yes. Amy, yes. Okay, very good. Thank you. All right, now we're going to look at the budget report and the projection. Um, and I don't know, you want to start with Greg? Would you like to say anything about... Um, Property taxes. Yeah, 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 surprise this time. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, actually, the uh, you know, if we go back, uh, you know, the the normally the taxes are paid. What is it, Amy? It's uh, June first, and uh, taxes are due by June first, the first installment, and then normally the treasurer by the end of June they're paying out the payments um, for a variety of reasons, probably COVID related. Uh, what was going on in that office there, COVID related with work schedules and everything. Um, uh, they didn't make the distribution until sometime in July. And, and then it was a very low distribution. You know, I mean, if, 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 if one assumes uh, or property taxes are due, the, fir the first installment, half, is due uh, uh, June 1st. The second installment, half, is due September 1st. So one would think, um, just reasonably, that you'd expect if, if property taxes are due, you'd, you'd get half in, in June and you'd get the other half in September. Um, normally what, uh, what happens is uh, 
because some people who don't have mortgages and aren't paying through escrow, uh, you know, maybe own their property outright. You know, a lot of people just, if they have the cash flow, they just, you know, they pay the full installment in June, okay, in the first payment. So normally, historically, if we go back in the years of the city property tax distribution, normally it's 50, it's over 50%, 51, 53, 54%, something like that. Just the last couple of years, uh, last year, the, the, the first distribution we got, my recollection is about 53%. Uh, the year before that, it was like 51%. But when we got the property tax distribution in July, um, somewhere around July 10th, um, it was only like 29%. So it was a much lower distribution. So we went back to, uh, um, we went back to uh, the treasurer's office and kind of inquired what was going on. And, and they had told us, you know, COVID related. Um, um, it was, it was more processing issues and staffing issues. We didn't, nothing we got from them gave us any reason to believe that people weren't paying taxes. Okay. Mm -hmm processing things well then for whatever reason you know at the county level there was remember the article in the press um, you know that sort of thing uh, there was county people saying eh, they should give distribution every every you know 30 days uh, to catch up um, um, and that's exactly what's happened okay um, we got uh, uh, you know the county the county treasurer's office never came back and told us that or probably any other unit of government this is what was going to happen but on July or August 11th, which was yesterday, um, we got a call from them that said, we have tax distribution checks available for you. The checks themselves were dated August 10th. Um, um, we received them August 11th. The funds were deposited the same day. Um, and so what we got, Rick, on the, this August 10th distribution that we received yesterday, the 11th, was 761000 five hundred and nine dollars and eighty eight cents okay if one were to assume that this 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 august 10th distribution is just you know kind of a catch-up for what they weren't able to process and and what we got in july what we got in august you bang those together and said that's what we would normally get in the june distribution it's it's like 55 percent so it's much more on order mm -hmm. of of first distribution we've received and actually a little bit higher okay so so uh, um, so we're, we're much more caught up but at the same time what the county has said what the treasurer's office has said they're gonna make a distribution every 30 days so on, we got a distribution August 10th on September 10th we're going to get a distribution on October 10th on November 10th on December 10th and then sometime in January and Amy you're smiling <laughs> okay so, so I guess the question that I asked Melinda Hawbaker, the city comptroller, to go back and, and talk to, to Drew um, about, you know, you know if, if, if the second half tax payments are due September 1st, will we get any of that on the September 10th distribution? Um, I don't know. So I, I think in large part, we got, we got more money. Uh, it's in the bank. So we're in good shape in the library finances. Uh, cash wise uh, it appears that the distribution what we've received now is a little bit ahead of normal level for this time of year uh, we're gonna be getting a distribution as we move forward uh, we'll see what those are but I think it's I don't think we have a problem at all uh, I don't think we have a problem so it's just uh, um, how things they'll we'll process in that office and we'll be getting money but we'll get some more money September 10th, we'll get some more money. October 10th, we'll get some more money, some more money, some more money. But I think it'll be okay. But there's no reason to suspect that we wouldn't, at the end of no. the year, when this is all done, be at our normal yes. level in terms of... No, no reason to suspect that. And as you know, uh, if somebody doesn't pay their taxes, they run the risk of losing the property. Right. So, um, so I, I don't think there's anything to worry about. I think it was just more... COVID-related processing issues that they ran into, and I think I think we're okay. And and that makes perfect sense to me. That yeah. you know that that is a completely un understandable explanation of what happened. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So, okay, good. Well, thank you for that because obviously when we saw that first number, it was like, <laughs> but you know, yeah. yeah, these you know, 
somebody has to open the mail. Somebody has to put them into the system. You know, it's not exactly, exactly, exactly. There's no nothing automatic about it. So exactly. it just would have been nice. Like a heads up would have been nice. Well, now you're asking for a lot, Samantha. That's I know. I mean, there's only I don't know twenty taxing bodies or something, right? Or like oh, they're they're. I don't know. Frank, yeah, well, you probably know that number. It's over 100, I think. Well, what I see on my tax bill, yeah. Yeah, the overall, yeah. like... Well, the, the, you know, the, the, ta the tax bill is another matter, but <laughs> there's, a, there's a large amount of taxing bodies in the city. I mean, it's probably, it's probably small double digits. Um, you know, uh, mosquito abatement. Uh, yeah. County health. Uh, but, in, but in the state of Illinois, I think there are well over 100... Yeah possible uh, well, uh well, illinois illinois has more taxing yeah. districts than any other country in the nation um and, they, and they've not gone through where other where other states have gone through consolidation of things illinois has not yet done that but but the thing is that uh, um um you know what it, I, i've always been disappointed about what appears on the on the on the tax bill because uh, normally what i'm accustomed to a tax bill you know it, it'll identify each line it, it'll say library It'll say police pension fund, fire pension fund, whatever. But because of the, there's so many tax districts in Macon County, they don't have enough. They don't have enough lines. Right. To on the tax bill. Yeah. Your, have, your bill would be your bill yeah. would be six pages long. So, so the software doesn't allow them to print every line. So they combine lines. So I mean, I've you know the tax bill that comes, you know, when I look at it for the city of Decatur, I can't make out what's there. You know. They merge this, this, and that on one line, and merge something else, and so it's uh, okay. it's, it is what it is. But we're okay. It, we're it, okay. it looks like it looks like you uh, on the tax bill that you that uh, as a taxpayer you're funding a huge uh, library uh, pension, uh, and that is not the case. <laughs> uh, oh. that, but the, but if if you're not careful looking at it, you know it can look like there's a library pension that you're that you're funding. Uh, it's not, that's not happening. Well, I, I will also say, though, that the, the detail, like the big picture detail of all those taxing bodies and how much they all are raising, all that stuff is available online. Yes. The combination yes, yes. of the twerk, the treasurer, and the auditor, right. but you can right. see all of it. If it's all there. Yeah. If you, yeah, you want to, you know, if you really want to know how much the mosquito abatement. Okay. Work, which is, you know, an interesting number by itself. But. Um, I just found out they'll do a lot. They'll do a lot of things for you. If you got standing water on your property, you call the mosquito abatement district, and they'll come take care of it. Yep. Um, okay. Um, I noticed we're fifty-eight percent of the year. That is correct, right, Rick? So it looks like payroll yes. still running slightly behind, as um, it has been for a while. Year to date is still slightly at fifty-four percent. And books are coming up to, you're catching up here on materials at 56%. Yes. Um, we've talked a lot about the office equipment in the past and it's, it's running slightly ahead. And um, medical expenses are running well ahead. Not well, that's because we're putting all, uh, I, I I'm putting all COVID-19 related costs on there and we're, we're working with the uh, city of Decatur uh, to see what we can get uh, reimbursed through the Illinois Cures Act. Great. And we did. Oh, so, so Rick, say that again. Um, where, if you're spending money for COVID stuff, where are you putting that? Uh, it's on this one. It shows up on the on the medical expenses line, but it, there's a, it was actually I just I, that's for simplicity's sake. There's actually a new budget line called. COVID okay. Okay. So okay. Yeah. So all right. So so that's, you're using that thing that we set up that COVID nineteen expense. Correct. Okay. Correct. Yeah. Where you put it here? That's fine. Yep. Okay. I, I've just got a kind of personal curious question for you, Greg. Um, you know, there's a lot of evidence that the airborne issues are bigger than the surface issues. What What's your feeling about the air handling system at the library? Well, well I mean, the, uh, um, uh, I, you know, I mean, uh, okay, just, 
we just we just had the uh, um, you know the air handling system has been upgraded. Um, the project's not totally finished. There's a few punch list items that have to be done. I'm not sure what they are, but it's pretty darn close to being finished. Uh, I mean, I would say mechanically it's all done. What I'm told is that everything is operating fine. There were a few bugs they were working out, uh, but everything is working fine. And uh, what what my understanding is, it's kind of like the system is, as we've redone the system, the system is more than what we need, okay? Um, so it's adequate to take care of things, you know, the airflow and the air handling and so on. Um, um, you know, specifically to answer your question about how does it relate to COVID? I, I mean, just like your conditioner homes, not. I don't think it's going to take out, uh, you know, virus floating in the air. I don't think the air handling system library is going to do it. So, I mean, it's back to the, you know, the same thing: wearing masks, uh, social distancing, and all, and separation, and all that kind of stuff. Um, we, it, it does allow us to to follow the the guidelines about kind of increasing your 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 stepping up your airflow level a little bit. Plus, we did. Okay. Like, like the city of Decatur did, uh, we purchased a, a fogger yep. and we have, uh, we have a, a, a solution that, that, that has been shown to kill the, the COVID-19 virus and we fog the air handler specifically, uh, I think it's every 14 days, I want to say. It's every two weeks. I think it's be done every yeah. two weeks. Yeah. So. Yep. And, the, and the other stuff that, you know, because it's a city owned building, uh, um, you know, uh, Mike Pritchett, uh, I had them recently, um, we had decided within the Civic Center to do uh, hands-free in the kitchens uh, and in the uh, restroom toilets for um, toilet flushing, um, uh, at the sinks with the, with the uh, water flow, uh, with the uh, paper dispensers, uh, you know, to wipe your hands after, uh, you know, you wash them. And stuff's being installed. Have them uh, go to the rest of the city buildings. My understanding, Rick, they've come to you. Um, yes. you. You desire to get that stuff in the restrooms at the library building. Um, um, uh, my understanding is that that's been, you know, we're going to do that. Uh, the stuff's on order and it, it'll be coming in and soon that those things will get installed, is my understanding. Right. Yeah, is that is it yours? Yeah, I, and I haven't since I, I I haven't heard any more since Mike was here assessing it. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, and uh, this is and my understanding is that that's part of the the Cures Act, right? Uh, the right. local Cures Act funds. So uh, right. I can't say. I mean, there's no reason not to do that. You know, I right, think. right. And 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 that expense for that building, you know, it's not going to be in the library fund. We'll capture it in the the building fund you know, the fund that the rent that we pay the city goes into right. pay there. And it's our, our belief that we're going to, this is part of what we'll submit to that Cures Act thing and we'll get reimbursed from the feds, the state. So we'll, you know, we'll effectively get this stuff uh, free of charge, you know, with the grant money we're going to get, but it's not going to be out of the fund 35 library expense. And there's another advantage to being a, uh, municipal library rather than a district library. Now, I, I take the minority view uh, in uh, uh, Illinois libraries, but there are some real advantages to being a municipal library. This is one of them, okay? Here's what's, here's what's out there for uh, the, what, 900 public libraries, and I don't know how many school libraries in, in the state of Illinois. Here's, how, here's, here's the, uh, the CARES money that's available, uh, $1.1 million. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For all of those, and uh, you know, my that the, this local cures act uh, that uh, we that we will have some benefit from as a municipal library. Well, that there's more to the city, yeah, than there yeah, is to yeah. every library in the state. So, so great. That sounds that sounds all super. Um, and then on a cash flow basis, it looked like you were great at the end of at the end of June, and if there's a, another check in the mail, uh, then there are no cash flow issues. No, I mean, you know, now that we got the tax rate, there really aren't. And, uh, um, you know, unless something completely unexpected occurs, you know, we're in good shape. Um, you know, we're, get, we're, get, we're gonna get through this year just fine. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll see what, what happens as we go to next year. Right. Um, 
Yeah. yeah, we'll see. I mean, we'll see how, where we get to next year. Yep. Right. Rick, did you have any other comments on the um, on the budget report? Uh, no. I, my my only thought is on the next uh, where we get to the projection. Uh, given what we now know, I'm not sure that there's any any point in looking at that worst case scenario. Uh, we could just look let's, at that. Yeah, let's just look at the best case and and we'll listen to whatever comments you want to make on that. You might just highlight anything that's changed since last month in terms of what you that's doing. And that's what I'll do. Let's see if I can get to uh, close that one. Look at this one. So uh, this is a, a, a trending downward a little bit and and hard to hard to know where it's going to end up. And next year could be even worse, the, the, the personal property replacement tax. But it's trending a little bit downward. The, uh, and I'm I'm going to say now that we're going to come up a little bit short there. Uh, it's still not it's still not terrible. Uh, it, it will be okay. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is uh, personnel costs. Uh, I'm predicting them to kind of catch up to where we budgeted. Um, this accounts for uh, the the. Unless we have more turnover after the end of this month, this accounts for, for where we are now with new hires, with fully staffed, uh, and we've actually added, uh, uh, we've made two half-time positions full-time and uh, added a half-time position. It's really a net gain, though, of, of about one half-time position. Uh, we are losing uh, our... Uh, administrative aid of now 44 years uh, she uh, her last day will be this Friday uh, and uh, we'll have a temp in that position uh, for the uh, the next several weeks at least while we kind of look and see which direction we want to go with that but that's the that's the number that's inching up so that we're now looking at a, uh, a surplus that isn't six figures um, and the reason I decided to go ahead and, and, and make those hires is as we're, as we're looking at staffing uh, issues, even with full staff here, and we're, and we're not, and I'll, we'll talk about that later, uh, I, I have been blind to the fact that what we're doing uh, with this short staff on, in the uh, Programs, Resources, and Services program is that we are uh, essentially We've got the, the head of programs, resources, and services putting 15 to 20 hours a week at a public service desk. And we've got the head of, uh, of uh, the uh, archives and special collections putting eight to 16 hours a week on a public service desk. We've got the head of technical services probably 20 hours or so a month on a public service desk. And these are very expensive. It, it, it's, it's not a good use of of, of, of their time, it's not a good use of, of the funds. They're, uh, you know, among the higher paid people here. And uh, I've got other things that I need them to be focusing on. Um, and the other thing is we're not fully staffed because, and I was talking, I, I met with a group of, uh, by, by a, a Zoom, uh, I met with a group of uh, directors from around the state today we're not alone in this, but we have uh, one staff member that still hasn't been cleared because of a chronic condition, uh, has not been cleared from her position to work in the building at all. Uh, and we have, every week, we've got somebody on quarantine for a couple of days, you know, uh, for a variety of reasons. So far, everyone has tested negative, but we've had people uh, quarantine for, you know, uh, I don't think it's been anybody more than four or five days, but it's constant. And, uh, you know, I had one director up north that she was like, I'm excited, only one person awaiting a test, you know, on, on the whole staff. So this is, it's hitting, it's coming a little closer to home now. Uh, you know, uh, 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 people are getting tested. We're, here are the reasons we're quarantining, direct contact uh, with a confirmed case. Uh, or travel to uh, a, a place that we consider higher risk. Uh, 
uh, uh, there are other possible reasons, but so far that's the those are the reasons we have uh, been in quarantine. So it's it's tough to I mean uh, uh, to keep a full uh, contingent in here. And oh, there was another person that was quarantined for uh, a few days because of symptoms, and they turned out to not you know to be negative also, but. And what's your experience about getting results of tests? Uh, we've been, uh, for, I don't think anybody's more than four days so far. Uh, and uh, 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 our people have been going to uh, Savoy, <laughs> CVS and Savoy, because uh, you can get right in apparently. And You're muted, Greg. I thought the crossing healthcare was relatively quick turnaround. I, I'm hurt. I, what I'm told is that, if I remember correctly, results were quicker, but it took more time to get in. I mean, so boy, just yeah. drive over there and get the test. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, you know, you know, one of the things, uh, just while we're talking about the COVID thing, you know, we're, I mean, who, who knows what's going to happen? Um, but like we in the city, we're, we're starting to talk about I mean, this is the time you start talking about the next year, 2021. And, uh, um, and you know, okay, there was, there was supposed to be a council meeting this last Monday night, you know, a study session to talk about COVID-19 related stuff. And that got derailed because uh, the city manager got a little overzealous and some material he sent to the council. Um, and uh, uh, the council decided it didn't want to... Uh, I needed more time to think about some of these things, but uh, it was it was a little overzealous. It was a, probably a little premature. It was a little um, maybe uh, um, 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 uh, it was whatever. Okay, but uh, but one of the things that that uh, you know is is probably likely. You know, even as we discussed, I mean, like with your revenue, Rick, I don't think property taxes are going to be impacted at all. Okay, but it's the it's the uh, the, P, uh, the PPRT we get, you know, um, you know, that's a coffer that the state, the state's in trouble and, and their revenues are, as, as we all read in the newspaper, their revenues are, are substantially negatively impacted, uh, income tax, sales tax revenues. Um, and, uh, and, and we're believing that, that they may be dipping into as many, they don't have cash reserves to rely on. So we, they may be dipping into, Things they distribute to us, which, as it would affect the library, could be PPRT. So that's a concern that I have as we go forward to 2021. You know, we there might not be as much money available for us on the PPRT as maybe we think. But I think we'll be okay property taxes, which is the bigger thing. Um, and and I, you know, we'll just have to, you know, just have to kind of play things out and see see what occurs as you know as we do the planning for next year. But in the short term, I mean, we've got that 300 plus thousand dollars in the capital fund. I mean, that's a cash reserve we can rely on in the short term, you know, and it could be, it could be, uh, you know, as, as you prepare the budget for next year, uh, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, is the board, us, are we gonna say, you need to have a balanced budget? Or, um, you know, depending where revenue comes, you know, to have a balanced budget, you might have to cut some staff or cut some services. We as a board may have to get into the discussion about, what is it that we want to do? Do we want to dip into some of those cash reserves to not affect services right. in the short term? So that that might be a discussion that all of you need to start thinking about and, and that'll play out over the next couple of months as we do the budget. And, and thank you for bringing that up, Greg, because this is, this is going to demand us to really do the job that we're supposed to be doing, which is set priorities yep, in a yep, situation yep. where we can't have everything that we want. And I really appreciate you bringing that up. And so that leads right into the scheduling issue, which Rick has on the, on the agenda, um, the budget planning process. Greg, do you have any sort of general ideas that are gonna look like the schedule for this year? Is it gonna be different? Do you have any yeah, ideas? It, it'll be similar. Um, it'll okay. be similar. I mean, uh, yeah, it'll be similar. I mean, no major, no major changes. Okay. And so, Rick, remind us when that means you start putting together your first numbers for us to 
chew on? Well, I, typically I start working out this month. And uh, what I've done so far is just I'm looking at personnel costs because that's the easiest one to get out. I'm starting expense first because sure. of some of the things that, yep. that Greg talked about. I, I, you know, I really don't know. I don't have the answers yet. So I'm starting expense first. And I've asked, uh, I've asked my division heads for, for input on, you know, wish list, need list, want list. But also uh, the, what I'm working on now is personnel cost because that's the one I can at least get a max number. Yeah. I, know, I know what my max is, you know, uh, and that, that one's the easiest to figure. Uh, and it's usually going to come out much lower than that max due to turnover. Uh, but uh, that's about as far as I've gotten this year. I've begun the uh, I've begun the uh, 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 personnel stuff, and I don't have a couple of uh, formulas that I'll you know I'll get from uh, uh, I'll eventually get from Greg's office. Uh, you know I am happy that I mean one of the things that has turned out uh, to be a pleasant surprise this year is that the healthcare costs are lower than expected. It looks like to me uh, quite a bit lower. Yeah. Well. Yeah, well, well, just just a comment on that is, I mean, as we all know, just living where we live in Decatur, that, uh, uh, you know, HSHS, St. Mary's, and DMH laid off a bunch of people. Um, and they did that primarily because um, they were paying staff and, and, and they had suspended voluntary medical procedures. Um, the docs couldn't do what the docs did, okay? So they laid off a bunch of staff to protect their bottom line, but but how that related to us, uh, our healthcare costs, claim costs went down this year because people weren't getting medical treatment. You know, I don't know. I, I mean, I'm just speculating. They didn't get the colonoscopy because they weren't doing the colonoscopies. Okay, um, um, you know, they were only doing, you know, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, life threatening treatments or whatever. Uh, so medical costs are lower. Um, you know, eventually that's going to pick back up. But at the, but at the same time, and, and this is it's it's all evolving. But you know, we've got. Uh, I mean, one of the things we're looking at in the city, we've got a nice cash reserve in the healthcare benefit funds. And one of the things we're looking at is we could harvest some of that cash reserve to offset some shortfalls, revenue shortfalls in various places. And if we do that for the city it's going to apply to the library too. Um, so, so, you know, this will play out Rick over the next short period of time, but, but what we charge the library for um, the healthcare costs, you know, we may end up having that at a lower rate next year because we're going to harvest some of the cash reserve we build up um, as a way to offset our revenue shortfalls. Okay. But you know, something will just play off and then play out in the next short term as we prepare the budgets. So I think, I, you know, what I'm hearing is that I'm going to continue to work on expenses first uh, and hopefully, uh, uh, you know, uh, I, I, we'll have some idea of what that PPRT uh, is going to, yeah, you know, how it's yeah. going to play out next year. And we'll have some conversations about, yeah. about the other sources of revenue. And then I, I plan to have a, 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 an initial proposal for this committee uh, at the September meeting. Okay. 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 Great. Thank you. And thanks for the background on some of those issues, which obviously are, are all big ones. Um, the, uh, the curves may have discontinuities in them that we need to be careful about when we assess those. Does anyone else have any other new business to talk about tonight? I, I have one item, um, and it's uh, it's, uh, it's it's COVID related, but uh, um, you know, and it's it's for Rick's employees. You know, Rick, one of the things I I recently asked you know um, uh, my staff, General McCoskey, to do is uh, is every year, you know, we're approaching flu season, and uh, every year. Uh, you know, the, uh, the city healthcare plan provides a free of charge opportunity out of pocket to get a flu vaccination to all of our employees and covered dependents on the healthcare plan, which applies to 
you know, to all those library people who are part of the healthcare plan. Um, um, the, the stuff that I'm hearing is uh, 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 that, um, uh, you know, we, we want to be aggressive with this. And so I got, I got Jennifer trying to see what she could organize that as soon as possible uh, that we could, um, we want everybody to get a flu shot. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the way we've left it in the past for the most part is, uh, you know, it's free of charge, but you have to go to your doctor to get one. You have, and then it's free. You have to go to CVS and get one and then it's free. What we want to do, um, we've, we've, we've done this on a low scale way in the past. What we want to do is do it on a broader scale where we bring the flu shots to the employees. You know, like we pick a day where um, in the library, uh, flu shots come in and, and everybody walks through the building and gets a flu shot, you know, because we want all the employees to get one. Um, just as we play things out to getting in this colder weather as a protect, further protection against influenza and, and, and any COVID related stuff. Okay. So okay. just so you know, um, when you're doing that, if you're involving your, the families, like the members of the families that they need to have, like, ideally we would have a doctor that could do kids under, yeah, yeah. under because yeah. I, felt I had to go to the health or I had to go to like urgent care because my doctor wouldn't give it to my daughter. Okay. So okay. it's just like, yeah. you know, for younger yeah. children. Understood. Thank you, Samantha. And you know, then that's what we're investigating now is what do we have to do? So we bring it, we bring it to all of our um, you know, healthcare covered people and dependents so we can, you know, so we can, it's free of charge. So let's bring it to them so we can protect everybody. So. And take out the, the next step, you know, like take out the, them having to do it themselves exactly. and schedule it themselves. And then everybody gets it all at the same time. I mean, yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So anyhow, so that's, that's, I just want to mention that. So you're aware Rick and we'll let you know more as great. Get plans laid out. So that was good. Yeah. Okay. That's great. That's really great. Is there any other new business? Well, then, I guess it's time to ask for a motion to adjourn. I'll move. I second. Okay. All in favor, Craig? Aye. Samantha? Aye. Amy? Yes. Thank okay. you.